The NASCAR Pinty Series has arrived in Toronto. This city is used to bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, but today it's high-speed, high-octane action as NASCAR lets loose on the lakeshore. St. Eustache's Kevin Lacroix controls the points on the back of his big win on the road course at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, then on his aggressive, confidence-fueled victory at ICAR last week. Now the series returns to Toronto, where the speed of this converted circuit at Exhibition Place, along with its twists and turns, make for an action-packed event. The race for the 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series Championship lands in the nation's biggest city for the fifth round. From the streets of Toronto, this is the Pinty's Grand Prix. On a beautiful Toronto afternoon, we welcome you to NASCAR Racing on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross. Todd Lewis and Tanya Baudet will be joining us trackside momentarily. But Adam, last year the series returned to the streets of Toronto in this 2.9 kilometer, 11 turn street circuit, and they didn't disappoint. What a show. Dave, give me 20 stock cars and our 20 race car drivers. You're going to get one hell of a show. Count me in. One driver who put on a heck of a show last week at Circuit Icar was the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. He beat and banged his way up through the field, but eventually went home with the victory and the points lead. He did. Alex LeBay and Andrew Ranger are still within striking distance. In fact, this is the most diverse, the strongest top 10 field in the history of the series. And believe it or not, we still have nine races to go in the 2017 season, so still lots of racing on track. Season is going to be a good one. Yesterday here in Toronto in the E3 Spark Plugs qualifying, NASCAR split the field into three separate groups. In the end, when the dust settled, number 27 of Andrew Ranger, the man from Roxton Bond, Quebec, took home the pole in a time of 1 minute 16.785 seconds. The driver of the Mopar Dodge. How cool is it? His third full position in four events here on the streets of Toronto, and he does it in his 100th NASCAR Pinty Series start. Well, the man definitely knows how to get around on the streets of Toronto. And with more on today's race, let's say hello to Todd Lewis. Todd? Thanks, guys. Yeah, Andrew Ranger on pole, but there are a lot of fast cars in this race. Posting the fourth quickest time during qualifying was the 44 car of series rookie Adam Andretti. Now, he's a rookie to this series, but he's got tons of racing experience, a lot of it on road courses and Trans Am and the like. He made his mark in Toronto by touching the outside wall during qualifying, flattened the right rear tire. The team has made repairs overnight. He will have to go to the back, but he will be a hard charger. Also getting lots of attention, the 25 car that was rolled out by Larry Jackson, the series regular with a Ricky Bobby special in that Wonder Bread Dodge. He's going to shake a bake, fellas. He wants to go all the way to the front. <laughs> Todd, that number 25 Wonder Bread car has been blowing up social media. Larry Jackson loves to have fun at the racetrack, but he's a ferocious competitor. He's in the top 10 in points to show for it. Now let's get the show underway. Let's send it back track side for today's command. Drivers, start your engine. Ryan O'Reilly from the National Hockey League along with Tony Spiteri from Pinty's and Byron Nelson from Leland as the drivers fire them up here at Exhibition Place. Dave, it's a huge day for these drivers in this series. One of our flagship events in the season on the streets of Toronto. Great looking field of race cars. Robin Buck back in the field as well. He'll be piloting the number 43. We'll ride along with his teammate Trevor Siebert in the 69. Starting right behind Robin Buck in the 43. That's a couple of experienced race car drivers. Field rolling off behind the Dodge Ram Rebel Pace Truck. When we return, we'll go to green here in Toronto. The Pinty's Grand Prix from the streets of Toronto on TSN is brought to you by Mopar. We built it. We know it. By E3 Spark Plugs. Born to burn. Spectra Premium. Automotive parts developed and engineered in Canada. And by Pinty's. Making great food fun. It really is a perfect day for a race here in Toronto, and it's a really fun track. Adam, let's take a look at this 11-turn, 2.8-kilometer street circuit. Dave, we don't have to wait long for the first great passing zone. Turn one is under heavy braking. This is a popular place to make a move, preferably to the inside. Bumps on the outside might make a difference. Then they head on to the back stretch, all the way down Lakeshore Boulevard. And turn three, again, heavy braking. We see a lot of positions change, but you got to be careful to make that tight corner. 
Another spot, turn number eight. It's not one that's terribly popular, but again, heavy braking. It gets really narrow exiting turn eight. And the car is currently on their second of two warm-up laps. And while they continue to put heat in the tires, let's take a look at the clean flow starting lineup. We already know who's on the front row, and it's the man who knows Toronto the best, Andrew Ranger in the number 27, who has Paul Alex Tagliani, last week's winner on the outside. Row number two has last week's winner, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, Adam Andretti in the 44. Good strong qualify. Back to row three, it's Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22 Chevrolet alongside Alex LeBay in the KM Ford. In the fourth row, the WeatherTech number 47 of LP Dumlin and the Innovative Plumbing 95 of Anthony Simone. Gary Clute back behind the wheel at the number 59. He'll start alongside the 04 of JF Dumlin. DJ Kennington at the 17. Peter Clute in the 42 make up row number six. Couple of young guns in row number seven, Caden Lapsovich in the 76, and Matthew Scannell in the 02. Then in the eighth row, Brett Taylor is back from Calgary, Alberta, alongside series veteran Robin Buck. Adam Martin in the number nine, driving the Ford, and Trevor Siebert from Williams Lake, B.C. in the 69. Row 10, Martin Cote in the 11. Larry Jackson in the Wonder Bread, number 25, will round out the starting field. There is a lot of quality equipment and great race car drivers today. We're going to have an excellent view from onboard Anthony Simone's number 95. Take a look at the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. 35 laps, a non-pit stop race. Sunny today. You won't need those rain tires here on the streets of Toronto. With another look at the field, let's head down talk to Todd Lewis. Todd? A couple of notes, guys, just before we go green. Lots of new asphalt around this track from corner 6 to corner 8 has been entirely resurfaced, but still plenty of bumps through 9, 10, 11, and corner 1, I'm told, worse than it's ever been. It could be treacherous going through there at times. And also, special birthday wishes to DJ Kennington, the only NASCAR competitor to compete in every Pinty Series event. The birthday wish, of course, success here in Toronto. 40 years young is DJ Kennington, and don't dare mention it to him in the paddock area. He grumbled when I wished him a happy birthday a little bit earlier on this afternoon, but still very feisty amongst this field of young guns. And Andrew Ranger was once a young gun. He's now a grizzled veteran and really good, as we mentioned here. And there will ride on board with the 69 of Trevor Siebert, who developed Area 27, a track in Oliver, B.C. And hopefully we'll get to have a better look at Area 27 in coming years. I know a NASCAR Pinty Series race is on the radar for Trevor Siebert, but we're about to go green here in Toronto, Dave. Adam, the field picking up the revs as they exit turn 11 onto the main straightaway. New Jersey Devils, Adam Henrique with the green flag in hand. We're racing in Toronto. Heading down to the first passing zone of the race, and look at Kevin Lacroix. He'll steal away the lead from the inside of row number two in the number 74, but a drag race now. Just like you said, you can make that move to the inside, but you've got to get the power down. Ranger and Tagliani got the power down better, so they make the move back. Contact further back, J.F. Dumoulin. Bounced off the wall off of turn number two. Into the breaking zone in turn number three. Tagliani taking a look up on the outside. Lacroix going to settle back in third, but look at Cameron Racy in number 22. As much as these drivers are trying to make moves, they're also trying to defend their position, so they'll stick their nose in and out, not wanting to back off too far and let the driver behind them find an opening. And our spotters are telling us the 04 Spectra Premium Dodge of J.F. Dumoulin has a tire going down from contact with the outside wall, so trouble early on for the driver of the 04 and a light up of the right front tire for the 74, Kevin Lacroix. We said turn eight is a heavy braking zone. Kevin Lacroix locked up that right front down into the corner. We'll watch for J.F. Dumoulin in the 04 slow on the racetrack. Everybody has got around him safely. Indeed, a flat left rear tire on the Spectra Premium car. Yeah, he damaged the rim on that car as he made contact with the wall. This is a non-pit stop race, but you do not get penalized if you have a tire going down as Anthony Simone takes a look underneath his brother, the 47 of J.F. Dumoulin. That's a battle for six spot. Anthony Simone always runs well on the streets of Toronto. Dumoulin in the pits with Todd. J.F. Dumoulin hustles that 04 car down pit road as quick as he can. Little trouble getting the jack underneath because the left rear tire is flat. Crew lifts it up. Jack is underneath. Now they'll go about changing that left rear tire. You can see the damage that rim is as well guys some damage to the left front as well as make contact there 
And even though they're in a hurry to get this work done, Dave, they've got a little bit of time. He's not going to lose a lap in the pits. He'll come back on the racetrack. Then he's going to need a yellow flag. So everything is sort of settled out at the front of the field. Everybody single file and Skinnell into the wall in the Alvec 02. Wow, I'm looking at the rubber marks leading up and I'm not sure if they're Skinnells or not, but significant front end damage on the 02 Alvec Ford. There's the yellow flag that JF Dumoulin needed. He'll be able to close back in on the field. And that's in turn number four. That's where Skinnell has come to a rest. He's managed to refire it, and he'll try to make it back to the pits, but you can see that car darting all over the place. A trouble to hang on to for the youngster. Carey Mix on top of the pit cart, along with Matthew's father, Howie Skinnell Jr. You can see him cueing the radio. They're in communication with Matthew, trying to find out what went wrong. Got to say, though, this full course caution has come at a good time for J.F. Dumoulin. He has those tires replaced. He was way back in the field. This will bunch him back up to the rest of the pack. We'll take our first break. Andrew Ranger continues to lead. Well, the fans here in Toronto enjoying some of what the Pinty's trackside grill has to offer as we're under caution. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross, Todd Lewis, and Tanya Baudet, both patrolling the pits. And Todd has caught up with young Matthew Skinnell, who unfortunately is out of his own Vic Leland Industries for. Yeah, guys, with Matthew Skinnell, unfortunately out of the race again early. Take us through what happened out there. Um, yeah, it was like lap two or three, I'm not even sure. Uh, we were going down the back straight and turned into the corner at the end of the back straight, had the wheel turn and went to unwind the wheel and the, a part in the front broke and jammed the steering. We couldn't unwind, the, I couldn't unwind the wheel and hit the wall, unfortunately, really early end of our day, but I gotta thank all my sponsors, Omvic, Leland, to get us here to the track, Advanced Auto Parts. We're hoping that this uh, is gonna change the luck finally one way for Matthew Scannell, guys. And for the team, we're back on the ovals, and that means Mark Daly will be back behind the wheel of the 02 when the series stops in Saskatoon for twin 100 feature laps. Green flag back out here on the streets of Toronto. Ranger and Tagliani once again into turn number one. You know, when I watch Kevin Lacroix, he really hung back from the back bumper of Ranger. That's how he gets those big launches off the start and was able to make a move. Not this time as Ranger leads the way out of turn one. And look at Alex LeBay trying to haul off L.P. Dumoulin and Anthony Simone. On board, Caden Lapsovich a little bit deeper in the field. Now we've got contact between Ranger and Tagliani. Ranger trying to hold Tag up on that outside groove. Tag manages to hang on to second spot as the field comes through. And again, by moving to the outside of Ranger, Tag kind of protects himself from Kevin Lacroix making a move on him. As long as he can tuck back in line coming off the corner, is more contact there. That looks like Adam Andretti and Peter Clute. <laughs> it didn't take long for Adam Andretti to get used to these old NASCAR race cars. His first race in the NASCAR Pinty Series, again, as Todd mentioned off the top of the show, a veteran of the Trans Am Series. He said he loves these cars because it puts driving back in his hands. Brad Taylor working the inside of Adam Martin. That's Taylor in the Pelodi number eight. He's had a good run. He raced at uh, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park at the beginning of the season. Ran in the top ten almost all day long in that race. He's looking pretty feisty today as well. Really turned a lot of heads as we rode on board quickly with the 69 of Trevor Siebert from Williams Lake, B.C. And that area of the country dealing with those devastating wildfires. But Trevor Siebert here in Toronto with us today is three wide nearly in the turn number one, and they all make it stick. Well, Lapsovich was making a move on Peter Clute, but he got into the corner so well he wound up making a move on Robin Buck as well. Great racing. Deeper back in the top ten. On board your third place car, the bumper to bumper Dodge Challenger of Kevin Lacroix. Now your race leader, the number 27 of Andrew Ranger contacted Ranger into the wall. Significant contact by Ranger into the tire barrier. He gets the car going once again, grabs a gear and takes off. But that was a hard hit, Dave. That was the 18 of Alex Tagliani who got to the back bumper of the Mopar Dodge, who was your race leader at the time. Cockpit full of smoke. He's got problems, says Andrew Ranger. He'll have to take a pit side to the attention of David White, his crew chief. Appears to be tire smoke. Something is rubbing. Yeah, the back end is all mashed up on that Mopar Dodge. This is going to be a lengthy fix for that crew. Down into turn number five, and boy, oh boy, Tagliani stuck his nose in. There, there's a few challenges here, Dave. Visibility out of these cars is very poor. 
as we have another look. Tag was up to about the rear wheel on the 27. Not only is visibility poor, but you also don't have a spotter over there. It almost looked like Ranger was surprised that there was even a car to the inside at turn number five. Not a normal passing spot, as we've seen here at Toronto, but lots of damage to that Mopar Dodge. And the team immediately going to work. They've got to try to get the car right to get him back on the racetrack. The 18 car doesn't look to be too damaged. He's still out in front. And Anthony Simone working another pass on Alex LeBay. Well, the 18 of Tagliani is in front, but NASCAR is reviewing that incident. So no call yet. The 18 stays out on track, but we'll keep our ears open. And keep in mind, at this event, there's cameras everywhere. So NASCAR officials have the opportunity to review the accident from different angles and decide if anything needs to be done. On board the Pioneer family pools 59 of Gary Clute. Check out the mustache on his helmet. A battle for six with the 47 of LP Dumoulin now tagged down pit lane. So NASCAR has deemed it a rough driving penalty. That's a drive through penalty at pit road speed for Alex Tagliani. Not nearly the penalty Andrew Ranger got for stuffing it into the tires, but a penalty nonetheless. Tag. Moving at a pretty decent clip down pit lane right now. It looks like he will rejoin the field. Now he does in fifth spot, so he really didn't lose too, too much time. And he finds a nice open spot in the track. The field is sort of separated there. He'll duck back in line and carry on. Kevin Lacroix, the number 74, he's had a run of great races on road courses. As a matter of fact, he's won every single one of them, dating back to GP3R last year. He's your new race leader. And he's not going to have an easy job of this because Mark Antoine Cameron in the Pie GM number 22 Chevrolet, right behind the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. And what track is Mark Antoine Cameron the best at, Dave? At Grand Prix 20 Pierre, where he's the most winningest driver in the history of that event. It is a street course just like Toronto. And he's very much looking forward to getting back to that track as well. But Mark Antoine Cameron built a lot of confidence at Sir 3 Icar after he got out of that car third place, said, I'm going to win one of these things soon. He had that much confidence behind the wheel of that number 22. Paye, big time behind this program as well. Cameron is hoping to put together a few more races for next year as well. Uh, wouldn't we love to see that? Mark Antoine Cameron has run a full season with us before. As we're watching right now, the battle for seventh place between Gary Clute in the 59 and DJ Kennington in the 17. This track is so challenging. You move from parking lots to city streets, from concrete patches back to asphalt as we ride on board with Caden Lapsovich sitting in ninth position. That's the Bay King Chrysler number 76, our defending champion, Caden Lasovich. And this team is really searching for support to try to defend their championship title, Dave. Yeah, they definitely need some funding here to finish off the season, and they need to keep their car clean each and every time they race. Adam Andretti, though, in the pits, flat tire on the number 44 as he was charging up through the field. Man, Adam Andretti has had a tough weekend. He had a tire go down in qualifying yesterday, smacked the wall hard. The team had to make repairs. And speaking of smacking the wall hard, Martin Cote in the 11th. That is turn number one, and he is blocking most of the exit. And the GoVR.com number 11, Cote sits crossways on the track. You see Andretti get by, and now a caution flag. So this will be a full course caution. And have a oh tail slap that that tire wall actually worked against the 11 of Cote, caught it with the tail and it spun the front end around and he really clobbered the concrete. Yeah, you can see some damage to the front end of the 11 as well. Couldn't get it turned and there is the number 27 of Andrew Ranger back out on the racetrack currently three laps down. So they really did a good job, the crew, in getting that car back out as quickly as they did. He will be a frustrated race car driver. Nobody likes to be laps down just putting in time, Dave. Right now, though, it's the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Can he make it two for two in two separate weeks? We'll see when we return. Welcome back to NASCAR Racing on TSN. How about that view of the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto? Those doing the CN Tower Edge Walk have the bird's eye view of the track, and we're getting set for restart number two here in the afternoon. Kevin Lacroix leads as we're working just lap 12 of the scheduled 35. Very 
early in the going. Lots of drivers still in contention, but boy, oh boy, Kevin Lacroix undefeated on road courses since Alex Tagliani won this race a year ago. There's a fairly large lead up to the green flag. It waves once again. Lacroix is going to hold on to the top spot, but look at deeper in the field. Tagliani way to the inside. Big move to the bottom for Tagliani and contact with Alex LeMay. They managed to get it settled as they work through turn number two and now onto that backstretch. Down through the gears for turn number three. Everybody snakes down single file into this corner. It gets skinny, exiting three into four and five, Dave. Brett Taylor was searching for a line up on the outside there, and how about Tagliani now working over the back bumper of the WeatherTech.ca number 47 of Dumoulin. The move worked so well last time. Why not try it again, Dave? <laughs> You never know. You might catch somebody off guard. Well, he did. <laughs> he sure did. This time they stayed clean, though. Alex LeVay just in behind that battle. Still Kevin Lacroix, Marc Antoine Cameron, and Dumoulin, your top three. Lacroix got a great launch as we look at J.F. Dumoulin, the Spectra Premium 04, trying to get back after a flat tire earlier. You can see he's already passed four or five cars. Adam Andretti as well, moving up back through the field. You saw the white and black number 44. He is no slouch here on the streets of Toronto. He's touched a wall, he's cut a tire, and he's still coming. Well, he started at the back, got to the top 10, went back to the back, and he is almost back to the top 10 again. I love the way these cars are able to slip and slide their way around the track. Tagliani now with a toe down Lakeshore Boulevard. He'll clear the 47 of Dumoulin into turn number three. Smart move by LV Dumoulin there. That is the poise of a previous champion. You know, Tag had the position. He backed off just a touch. Get right down into the racing line before Alex LeBay has the opportunity to make a move. And back on board with Anthony Simone. Many weeks in a row now we talked about the innovative plumbing number 95 of Anthony Simone and hopefully he'll have luck on his side this weekend Simone is due for a really good finish and you know what's interesting he's driving the wheels off of that race car chasing Alex LeBay in the Can-Am number 32 I'll let you in on a secret Alex LeBay does not like it here he crashed last year in qualifying bad enough. The crew was up most of the night to fix it. He's been in the top five today, but he will be the first to tell you he does not enjoy this racetrack. Something about it he just doesn't feel confident on. It is intimidating. Walls on both sides as Dumoulin takes a look underneath Brett Taylor in the 08. That's a move for 12th. It does not work as Taylor hangs on in the Pilate Ford Fusion. A couple of drivers who've been to pit road back on the track is Adam Andretti and J.F. Dumoulin as Mark Antoine Cameron. This is interesting to me. He's running the racing line. Kevin Lacroix is running a defensive groove. He's running the bottom. You have to brake harder when you enter on the bottom as Adam Andretti around Brad Taylor. Here goes J.F. Dumoulin to try to do it as well on a turn four. My goodness, it's skinny in there. It really is, but once that hole is open up, you might be able to make a move. This time, Dumoulin decided it's better to back off, and we'll wait and try him in turn number eight. This is where the track had been repaved. Tom did talk about this off the top of the show, and we'll see if Dumoulin can make it stick going into turn number eight. And Brett Taylor actually got a really good run through those twists and turns down into the narrow number eight, up into nine and ten. Brett Taylor having a good run. Let's watch Kevin Lacroix in the 74. He ran that defensive inside lane into turn three. Now he'll come out towards the wall in turn one, but Dave, you use up so much more tires, so much more brakes. You overheat the tires when you try to run a defensive line. Mark Antoine Cameron could be trying to use up that 74. He could just be sitting back. I mean, Cameron is really a veteran of these road course races. He's, as you mentioned, spent a, a full season running the NASCAR Pinty Series, so this is just his second start in 2017, but he is by no means a rookie. And right now, he's chasing Kevin Lacroix, who is a wily veteran of this series now. He's got five series wins, six series wins after last week's win, and Brett Taylor off the pace. Something looks strange under braking. That car really lurched out towards the wall. J.F. Dumoulin, Robin Buck, and then Andrew Ranger get by. 
and it sounds like Brett Taylor is off the pace. Yeah, Brett Taylor is expected to make a start in Edmonton when we get back on the ovals in the western swing, but something amiss on the Pilate number eight right now as he drops back from the pack where he was racing. He was up just outside the top ten, sitting in 12th spot. We saw a quick glimpse of the 43 of Robin Buck as well. And keep in mind, Andrew Ranger, this Mopar 27, is laps down to the leader. So every pass he makes on the racetrack is actually not a pass for position because he's running on a lap all by himself. But right now, he's just trying to figure out how he can make his car the quickest as possible because you never know. We've seen cautions here in the past. Sometimes you get a lot of them. Sometimes you get very few. But on a street circuit, you never know. And of course, with a caution, you have the opportunity to get a free pass. We have a look at Trevor Siebert in the 69 and Adam Martin in the Johnsonville number nine. But Todd's in the pits with the eight car. Not just a problem with the tire, but looks like it was a pretty good hit that has flattened the right front tire, guys, of the aid of Brett Taylor. He was a strong competitor in the first run of the year at CTMP. Uh, this is a bad news situation now for this 18. He's shutting off the engine. Now, when the crew starts waving their hands, saying we're probably not going to get this one fixed, you know it's a tough day. So the CBRT crew will try and put that car back together, but Brett Taylor obviously not racing for points, so there's really no hurry today. Look at this. We're looking at eighth position all the way back to 12th within striking distance. If Gary Kluke can find an opening to make a move on DJ Kennington, Kennington could find himself all the way out of the top 10 in a hurry. DJ Kennington very much looking forward to getting off the road courses and back on the ovals. He leads this mini pack. Gary Kluke, the Pioneer Pools, number 59, just in behind. Caden Lapsovich in the 76. Adam Andretti in the 44. And there's Peter Kluke in the 42 in there, too. Well, Adam Andretti has already passed a lot of cars. <laughs> He's been from 20th up to 10th twice. By my rough calculations, Dave, that's about 20 passes today. And he's right on the back bumper of the defending series champion. Running with support from Bay King Chrysler today is Caden Lapsovich in the number 76. Yeah, crazy to me that the hood is still bare on defending champion Caden Lapsovich. He is a factor in every one of our races. And how about this? A move to the outside into turn three. And there's Lapsovich keeping in mind to keep that car clean. He knew the 44 was quicker. You might as well just let him go and tuck in behind and try and attack later as... Adam well, Andretti wanted to go to the front. And Lapsovich is no fool. He's been around this 10th position all day. He's got to know that Adam Andretti has been to the back twice. So maybe, just maybe, if he ducks in behind the 44, he'll learn a thing or two. And we're just past the halfway point, so there is still a lot of racing left to go here in the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto from Exhibition Place right on the waterfront, downtown Toronto. How did Adam Andretti make that corner? He didn't pass the 59 going into the corner. He rocketed past him and then still made the 90-degree right-hand turn and drove away. See, that's the thing when you don't have a lot of experience in these cars. You make moves because you just don't know if they'll work or not. You figure, I'm not as well. There's a hole as Caden Lapsovich is going to come through a hole in turn number one. They got ninth spot underneath the 59 of Gary Clue. Two positions Gary Clute has lost in the last half lap. That's his father, Peter Clute, in the number 42, right behind him as they race down Lakeshore Boulevard. Look at the gap Adam Andretti has already opened up on the 76 of Lapsovich. I was talking to Gary Clute earlier today. I said, it must be fun running with your dad. Do uh, you ever bug him when he beats you? And he said, he never has yet. That's pretty neat. He's always beat Pop. You've got to love Gary Clute's confidence, too, because if his dad did beat him, he would forget it in a big hurry. <laughs> There's your race leader, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, the Pie Chevrolet, the number 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron, keeping him honest here on the streets of Toronto. He's been haunting the race leader, Kevin Lacroix, within a car length and a half for the last many, many laps. And he'll continue to chase him down the front straightaway. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back here on TSN. One driver who I think will say he's enjoyed his time here at the PT's Grand Prix of Toronto will be the 44 of Adam Andretti. He's gone from the back to the front to the back again and now has just passed Anthony Simone for sixth place. And he's not just making these passes subtly. He's driving down there, outbreaking people. 
the brakes on these cars do wear out, Dave. They don't last forever. But for Adam Andretti, he has really been getting the most out of that 44 machine, of course, prepared out of the Scott Steckley stables. And we mentioned earlier that Adam Andretti does want to do more races in this car and in this series. So hopefully we'll see him again in 2017. Look at how close Cameron is to your race leader, though. Ducks to the outside into turn number three. And Lacroix still running that inside line. So he's really working that outside front tire, really working the brakes. And Mark Antoine Cameron not working the car quite as hard, but he's still, he has not even shown a nose to the race leader, Kevin Lacroix. Adam, you mentioned 22 racing out of the Scott Steckley stable. Three cars in the top six right now. That's how good that team is. Well, and at one point yesterday, they had three cars out of the top four in practice. In fact, Dave, at the end of practice yesterday, the top five cars were within three one hundredths of a second. That is how tight this field was bunched. On board the 95 of Anthony Simone into turn number eight. There is a little curb to the inside of that just as you hit the apex towards the inside wall. Cameron all over the back of the bumper to bumper. Dodge the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. These two had a little bit of bumper tag at Circuit Icar last week as well. Well, Kevin Lacroix admitted he bumped a lot of cars, and Mark Antoine Cameron was one of them. This is as close as he's been to the 74 coming off of turn one, but boy, look at the horsepower coming out of the 74 machine. Cameron on the outside, turn number eight. Again, that defensive line from the number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Cameron unable to make a move in the Paillet Chevrolet number 22, and you can see how rough this track is in spots as we take a look at a good battle for seventh now between the 95 of Simone and the 17 of DJ Kennington and the good folks from Castrol here cheering on their driver Dave Fifield and Natalie Davis here in the grandstands and interesting to note in the Porsche GT3 series win went to Scott Hargrove with Castrol backing we may see him in this series yeah, I heard within the next month maybe a GP3R we'll see Scott Hargrove behind the wheel of one of our NASCAR stock cars riding on board the 76 of Caden Lapsovich one driver who's out standing by with Todd Lewis Todd puts the hands up in frustration Fred Taylor you were having another pretty good run today what happened out there well truthfully I ran out of water in my water bottle so I thought I had to come in so no I was trying to defend uh, Dumoulin coming off me I was trying to get really hard on the gas through turn two and I got a little sideways and tried to cut the corner and clipped it with my front tire it's all my fault Tough break for Brett Taylor. He'll be joining us out west as the NASCAR Pinty Series swings out there next, guys. Couple great stops out west and the, as the series heads there, Todd, as you mentioned, the Velocity Prairie Twin 100s in Saskatoon. Then the series moves on to Edmonton. Another tight oval. The Luxor 300 in Edmonton presented by Bayer. Should be great racing. I'm excited for twin 100 lap features. Two full feature events on Wednesday night in Saskatoon. Full point events too. It should be exciting because what happens in the first one, you don't have a lot of time to fix for the second one. We'll see how that plays out in Saskatoon. But right here in Toronto, we still have a lot of interesting aspects playing out, including the 95 of Anthony Simone at the tire wall. And it looked like he just overcooked the corner, maybe got some tire chatter out of the rear tires and backed it into the tire barrier. He's coming under heavy pressure from the Castrol Dodge of DJ Kennington. So maybe just missed his mark going into that turn. We'll have another look. He's way off the apex going into that turn. You almost wonder if there was maybe fluid. At the, at the very end, you almost hear it go into, oh my goodness, mode. They really get on the brakes to slow it down. More trouble with the 43, the Ontario Chrysler Dealers Advertising Association, number 43 Dodge of Robin Buck. That's in turn number four, and we're hearing reports no power from Crew Chief Al Liebert on the 43 of Robin Buck. So it looks like he'll be able to park it in the runoff. No full course caution. Now we're seeing a battle on the track for 11th position. 
Gary Clute in the 59, Peter Clute in the 42, and Jean-Francois Dumoulin in the 04. He'll swing to the outside of Peter Clute's 42 machine and attempt to outbreak him into turn number three unsuccessfully. Well, he puts a bumper to the back of that Chevrolet, though, as Dumoulin wants to head back up to the front. You remember early on, first lap of this race, he touched a wall, cut down a tire, got it replaced, stayed on the lead lap, and he's trying to work his way forward. That Spectre premium time. You know, it blows me away the road racing talent we have in this series. These guys are fighting a little bit deeper in the pack. We're getting down to the closing laps, but these are three top-notch race car drivers. Seven laps to go, so if you want to get to the front, you really have to make something happen. The 25, the Wonder Bread Dodge of Larry Bobby, as they've called him here today, Larry Jackson, off the pace a little bit. He'll go a lap down to your race leaders, the 74 of Kevin Laquala, 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Jackson did the sportsman-like thing, got out of the way on Lakeshore Boulevard, gave the leaders lots of room to get by. Mark Antoine Cameron still a car length and a half to two car lengths back of the race leader, Kevin Lacroix. Now Dumoulin on the outside in turn number one will manage to get around the 42 of Peter Clute. That puts the 04 Spectre Premium Dodge into 11th spot as he chases the top 10 and Gary Clute just ahead. Gary Clute in the 59 machine. Too far ahead for J.F. Dumoulin to make a move down into three. In fact, Dumoulin more concerned with Peter Clute. He'll defend the inside group keep Peter Clute behind him as we're on board watching Gary Clute work that steering wheel in the Pioneer Pools number 59. The mustache man trying to gain some momentum as now we hit six laps to go as the leaders have crossed the line. So it is go time. If you want to get to the front, you better start moving now. J.F. Dumoulin trying to get a run. He's taking that bigger arc down towards turn number eight. Drives to the inside down into the apex of the corner. He'll make the pass on Clute. There's that move into turn number eight. As you mentioned, it's a sometimes passing spot for the lead, though. Turn number three, Cameron on the outside and into the tire wall. Oh, and he is also blocking the track. This is the second time today we've seen a driver get into the tire wall and wind up in a very precarious position. Yellow flag is out. That is a full course yellow with significant left side damage to the 22 of Marc Antoine Cameron. That is heartbreak for Cameron. He was trying everything he could to get around the 74. We've got a couple cars stopped, and it looks like the 32 of LeBay had stalled for a second there, and now he does come to a stop. That's the exit of turn three. It's tough to refire these engines when they're warm. Well, and under yellow, NASCAR rule, you have to maintain a reasonable caution speed. If cars go by, the officials can deem the 32 did not maintain speed. He could wind up losing those positions. Have another look at the reason for this caution. Uh, Cameron just got into the corner a little bit hotter than he could handle yep. and slid up the race track. I mean, there was clearly no contact between Lacroix in the 74 and Cameron in the 22, and he has rolled down to pit lane. Todd? After that contact, out on course, the 22 has made his way to pit road, and the crew saying, looks like we're done. Shutting it off, guys. Tough break for Mark Antoine Cameron. And take nothing away from Mark Antoine Cameron. He was trying. Now, we'll give you an update on the field. The 18 of Alex Tagliani, also down pit lane. He was in third spot. It looks as though some suspension damage. On the back end, we're hearing it's the Watts Lake that's broken on the low Zeppi Pen Dodge. That was a tough lap for Steckley Motorsports. They had a car battling for first, a car running in third, and both of those cars now out of contention on pit road. Their only remaining hope in the top five, the 44 of Adam Andretti. And how about LP Dumoulin hanging inside the top three as well, sitting in second spot. We'll go back to green when we return. The Pinty's Turn 1 Trackside Grill here at the Toronto Indy has been a busy spot to watch all of the NASCAR action all weekend long. Kevin Laquan is bumper to bumper. Total Dodge has led since lap number seven. Just three laps remaining here at the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. And this is a brand new race. LP Dumoulin, we've not seen what the WeatherTech 47 has for Kevin Lacroix. And don't count out Adam Andretti in the 44. What about Alex LeBay in the 32? The Can-Am Ford Fusion is in the mix right now as well. This is going to be an interesting restart. As we head on to the front straightaway, the green flag once again will wave for the NASCAR Pinty Series here on the streets of Toronto. And once again, it's Kevin Lacroix nosing out front. Lacroix got a great start, but wow, look at him. Simone up the inside. 
side, battling with the 76 of Kate Lapsovich. They had issues at ICAR last week together once again on the racetrack. A little slipping and sliding. It looks like Simone may have brushed the inside of turn two, but he keeps going as we head down the Lakeshore Boulevard. Alex LeMay and Adam Andretti side by side. Andretti going to close the door down into oh, third place. He slammed it, and Dumoulin had to do the same to Andretti to hang on to second spot. Caden Lapsovich to the outside of Anthony Simone, who's going to come out of turn three with the spot. Lapsovich. Now remember, those two just last race at Sir Free Icar, they had a battle that ended for Caden Lapsovich with some broken body panels and also for the 95 of Anthony Simone. Broken race car and very hard feelings. Lapsovich out in front of Simone by a little more than a car length right now. He'll try to get as far away from that 95 as he can. There was no hugs when the drivers were signing autographs in the autograph session earlier on today, but the field of cars stringing out Adam Martin in the Johnsonville number nine, a little bit crossways off of turn number eight. That young man has quietly had a very solid day. That's exactly exactly what they need. They need to get to the checkered flag unscathed and try to build some momentum on this western swing. Remember the miserable race he had here one year ago? Adam Martin has learned so much in one season behind the wheel of that number nine. Adam Andretti, that's the car I would watch. He's able to get into these braking zones so very well. Right now, Kevin Lacroix opening the gap on LP Dumoulin in the 47. Andretti is the car that I want to see. How does Andretti still have brakes in that Dodge? He I mean, doesn't he's... use as much of them. Look at him fly into the corners. But he still manages to gain some ground. And then he gets a good drive off as well as Dumoulin heads to go into defensive mode. Hang on a second spot. Kennington into the back of the 32 of LeBay. And it looks like that opens the door for the 04 of Dumoulin to get past. Yeah, Kennington. Wow, J.F. Dumoulin up the racetrack. DJ Kennington looking to get back on the right-hand side, which is the inside for the next couple of corners. You talked about a big mover in the 44 of Adam Andretti. I'm going to talk about the 04 of J.F. Dumoulin. He needs this run. Trouble early on, went to the pits, almost went a lap down, stayed on the lead lap thanks to a caution, and he has been on a tear coming up through the field since that contact. In front, you can see the, the Castrol Dodge making contact with the nose of the 76 of Lapsovich. That was some close quarters racing for sure. Final lap here on the streets of Toronto. So it's still Kevin Lacroix out in front of the 47 of LP Dumoulin and the 44 of Adam Andretti. Down Lakeshore Boulevard they go. Nobody looks to be close enough to really mount a challenge, but look at Alex Tagliani. Slowly around the racetrack, Kevin Lacroix is going to catch the 18. Everybody in the top five will go nose to tail for turn number three. Anthony Simone on the back bumper of that Bay King Chrysler number 76 of Caden Milasevic. There's and Alex Tagliani found a safe spot to pull off. Sportsmanlike thing to do, get out of the way of the racers racing for position. Yeah, so no caution. You saw just the waving blue flag, which indicates a caution in the NASCAR Pinty series. Still watching Kevin Lacroix through turn number eight. He'll take a look in his rearview mirror and see he has space in nine. Now ten as he'll see his pit crew down pit lane this time. Final turn. What a story. The driver from St. Eustache, Quebec, goes a full season of road course races undefeated. Kevin Lacroix wins his seventh NASCAR victory. The 28-year-old dominant here on the streets of Toronto. Survived some early race mishaps, led the rest of the way. What a show here in Toronto. We'll be back for Victory Lane. He finished third here one year ago, jumped up two steps on the podium here in 2017. Let's head down to Victory Lane. Smile on his face as he climbs out of the 74 Woo! machine victorious one more time. Kevin Lacroix, a perfect three for three in road courses this season in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Congratulations from his team, a kiss from his wife, and last week uh, it was a little more rough and tumble. You weren't making any friends, but you really had a strong car today. Yeah, the car was uh, car was good. No, man, it might not be the fastest, but you know the old team you have. Uh, you need to have a good driver, a good team, and that's what we have. And uh, it's five on five on road courses, so uh, very happy. And 
you know, every every win is uh, every way to go uh, to the win is uh, is a good way. So, yeah. Big smile on the face of Kevin Lacroix after victory number three. Louis Philippe, we talked about the fact that it was a tough track. The the drivers drove really aggressively, but I guess you took care of it pretty well. Well, it was a tough race, obviously, uh, where car was not fast enough in practice yet, yesterday in quality, but uh, we had a good idea that it was going to be fast in the long run. Not quite enough to win the race, but thanks to my sponsor, WeatherTech, by Mar, I mean, it's in town Toronto with from my sponsors and friends, and uh, very happy for the team. They worked really hard, so we're going to keep on moving and building on that. Well, he did what he needed to do to gain some points. We're first, we'll take a look at the top 20 finishing order here in the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. You can see Alex LeBay and J.F. Dumoulin coming home in the top five. Yeah, Dumoulin really salvaged a great finish. Of course, the Clutes ninth and 10th, and down the list, Andrew Ranger disappointed in 14th, and of course, Matthew Scannell, first car out of the race in 20th. Todd standing by with a happy third place finisher. Uh, he's a rookie in the NASCAR Pinty Series, but he sure didn't drive like a rookie. Boy, did you make an impression today. How much fun was it? That was a blast. Um, can't say enough. First of all, about these fans. Uh, these, these Toronto fans come out, and they just support this stuff like no other. So thank you, the fans. You watching at home, can't thank you all enough. Hope we put on a great show for you. That was a lot of fun. Um, you know, the 22 Racing Group, I'm so blessed to be a part of this team and, and Scott Steckley's group, consummate professionals. I had to wear my stuff out pretty hard to get where I was. So there on that last restart, I didn't have much for the top two contenders. All the congratulations to Kevin and that whole team. They did, a, they did an awesome job all weekend long, kept that thing up front. He felt confident all weekend. So uh, went and went to the right guy and uh, feel good about where I'm at right here too. Thank you. Well, a smile says it all. It gives you an idea of what kind of day Adam Andretti had as we'll take a look at the point standings and a little bit of a shakeup here after the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. Alex LeBay still there in the top three, but how about LP Dumoulin moving up as Andrew Ranger moves down? Caden Lapsovich, remember this, 36 points behind in fifth place as we go to three oval races in a row. Now time for the podium celebration and Tony Spiteri from Pinty's handing out the hardware. Big hug for Kevin Lacroix and Tony knows the champagne is coming. It starts with water, Tony. You better get out of there. The Pinty's Grand Prix from Toronto has been brought to you by Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. WeatherTech, the ultimate interior protection for your vehicle. And by Honey Goo from Clean Flow on Honey of a Loop. The three celebrate on the podium. A successful run in Toronto. And Dave, now we head west. From all of us here at TSN, we'll see you in the prairies. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.